Hi, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for joining today's Indeed Jobcast on navigating the job search and remote work during COVID-19. I am Abby Carlton. As Indeed's Director of Social Impact, I lead our global efforts to address bias and barriers in hiring through product innovation, partnerships, and community engagement. I'm joining you from home today, but the picture you see behind me is actually one of our Indeed offices in Austin, Texas. To start, I want to take a moment to acknowledge that the current situation we are in is not business as usual. Searching for a job is already challenging, but it's even more complicated with both you and employers trying to take steps in the best interest of public health. It's important that you know you are not alone, and we are here to help you. Before we begin, I'll cover a few housekeeping items. First, you are in listen-only mode. You can hear us, but we can't hear you. Second, we're recording. You'll be able to view this webinar on demand later on YouTube, and we'll send you that link. And third, ask questions. Post on the Indeed community discussion using this link, and our team of career coaches will be answering. In this quick webinar, we're going to cover a lot including how the coronavirus has impacted work and hiring, how to find work, how to stand out in a remote interview, and a few tips and best practices to make the most of working from home. We'll also leave some time at the end for questions. Now I'd like to introduce you to a few people. First, Jed Kolko is Chief Economist at the Indeed Hiring Lab, an international team of economists and researchers dedicated to delivering insights that help drive the global labor market conversation. The Hiring Lab produces research on global labor market topics using Indeed's proprietary data and publicly available sources. Next, Clint Karens is a career coach at Indeed who specializes in resume reviews, networking strategies, interview prep, and negotiation techniques. He formerly worked in higher education and state government. And that's me, Abby Carlton. So let's jump in. Jed, do you want to get us started? Thanks very much, Abby. Um, and thank you all for joining us today. Um, I'm Jed Kolko. I'm the Chief Economist here at Indeed. Um, and just wanted to share um, a very little bit at the start uh, about how economists are thinking about the situation that we're all in right now. Um, COVID-19 is, of course, both a health crisis and an economic crisis all at once. Um, and as we hear what policymakers are trying to do, um, to flatten the curve, save the economy. Everyone is working um, at both of these, on both of these crises um, simultaneously. Um, what's happening on the economic side, uh, if we can go to the next slide, um, is several things. Um, first of all, um, some sectors uh, of the economy um, are essentially shutting down, at least temporarily. Um, businesses and consumers have stopped traveling um, in many places. Uh, people are sheltering in place, staying at home. Uh, so that, of course, affects uh, restaurants um, and other in-person establishments. Um, at the same time, um, there are some sectors that are hiring more, sectors that support the stay-at-home economy, uh, sectors uh, like some retailers, um, delivery, uh, and, of course, uh, as always, very strong demand uh, for lots of people in the healthcare field. It's very hard to make any predictions right now, though. The economic path really is uncertain. Some people uh, have tried to compare what we're in right now to the beginning uh, of recessions that we've experienced. Um, other people uh, point to similarities with wartime, as some sectors uh, close down while others expand. Um, others have pointed out that in some ways, uh, it's like what happens in a natural disaster, like a hurricane. Uh, with uh, many people out of work, at least temporarily, um, but hoping uh, for a fairly uh, strong and quick bounce back. When we talk um, to job seekers, uh, when we talk to consumers on our site, um, we're asking them, what are their top concerns? Um, and as you see, um, it is, for job seekers, both a health crisis and an economic crisis. People are concerned that they might have to take a financial hit, um, and they're concerned that they're going to have to care for loved ones. They're worried about losing their jobs as well as contracting or spreading the virus. So there's a lot uh, that we're all thinking about right now. 
Um, and that's why it's such an important time uh, to really understand what's going on both on the health side and in the labor market. Thanks, Jed. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Clint. I'm a career coach here at Indeed. Um, as we embrace new changes and shifts in our work culture and habits, many people are feeling overwhelmed. But there is some good news. Whether you're in the midst of a job search, navigating the temporary or permanent loss of work, or struggling to stay focused while working from home, there are several steps you can take to potentially improve your outcomes. As of today, three in four Americans are being asked to stay home or soon will be. Limiting our contact with others is one way we may lessen the impact of this virus. In our survey, 73% considered the coronavirus a real threat, and 81% of respondents reported checking news surrounding COVID-19 at least daily. I suggest you visit cdc.gov for the latest updates. Now, it's easy to feel overwhelmed, but here are a few ways to take care of yourself and stay positive despite these circumstances. First, remember what's most important, your health and the health of your loved ones. We're all adjusting, and it's important we prioritize our mental and physical well-being. Also, be patient with yourself, with employers, and with those around you as we all navigate these changes and determine the next best steps. Empower yourself to continue taking action when it comes to your job. Finally, small actions can make a big difference. For example, go for a walk, drink plenty of water, and make sure you're getting enough sleep. Doing so will help ensure you can focus on your work or your job search. That said, coronavirus has affected every industry and job type, at least to some degree. Currently, we're seeing coronavirus impact work in three unique ways. First, the rapid spread of the coronavirus has led to the cancellation of events and conferences and temporary closure of many retail stores, restaurants, bars, entertainment venues, gyms, salons, and other public facing businesses, leaving many people temporarily out of work. Some businesses have chosen to freeze or slow hiring activity, which can be discouraging for those currently seeking a new opportunity. The good news is many employers are still actively hiring, but they're adapting their hiring practices to current needs. Uh, virtual interviews are becoming a popular alternative to the in-person experience. Finally, in an effort to slow the spread of the virus, many employers have asked their employees to work from home. While this flexible work arrangement has plenty of benefits, it also presents a few challenges, especially for those not accustomed to working from home or those with busy households and shared living spaces. Now, if you've become temporarily or permanently employed due to business closure or any other reason, it's likely you need some, uh, something you can start doing immediately and begin generating income quickly. But how can you find it? And what can you do to increase your chances of success? First, there are still plenty of demand for the type of frontline and essential workers needed. A number of companies across these industries have announced hiring plans to meet their demand and to help displace workers. Grocery stores like Aldi and Kroger, uh, pharmacies like CVS and Walgreens, convenience stores like 7-Eleven, discount chains like Dollar Tree or online and big box retailers, healthcare providers, if you're qualified to work in a hospital, and healthcare manufacturing like GE. You can find all these job postings on Indeed, up to date and ready for applications. If you're looking for something steadier, more long-term, or something that won't require you to venture outside, uh, consider remote or work from home jobs. The share of job postings on Indeed that advertise remote or flexible working arrangements has been steadily rising for the past year, and that trend has continued in recent weeks. Uh, now, Indeed is updating our platform so employers can add new labels and search results and on the job descriptions to make it easy for you to see whether a job is fully remote or remote temporarily due to COVID-19. Remote work opportunities span a wide range of industries, uh, job roles and experience levels. Uh, the best place to start is by identifying your top skills and determine which opportunities align with those strengths. Be sure to think about your transferable skills. Those are qualities that can be transferred from one job to another, easing your transition and helping you be effective in your new job right away. For example, if you excel in communication, typing, organization, and feel comfortable with software like Office 365, G Suite, or Asana, uh, you may be well qualified for a job as a virtual assistant or project manager. If you have experience in customer facing roles, um, especially answering questions, addressing concerns, taking feedback and resolving conflicts, you may well be suited for work as a remote customer service representative. Um, and if you enjoy writing and researching and have good grammar, um, then you may want to consider working as a freelance content writer. Next, whittle down your searches to only the most relevant positions. There are a few ways to search for remote jobs on Indeed. 
If you don't have a specific job title in mind, or you want to broad, uh, broad, uh, have the broadest possible results, I should say, uh, you can just put remote keywords in the what box, like remote, or work at, or from home, or home base, or telecommute, or cyber commute, and leave the where box empty. If you have a job in mind, type the job title you want in the what box, and use a remote keyword in the where box. Another option is to type the job title paired with a remote keyword in the what box and leave the where box blank. As you search, don't forget to set up job alerts so that you are notified via email when new jobs that meet your criteria are posted to Indeed. Job alerts automate your job search and allow you to be among the first to see fresh job listings while reducing pressure on you to continuously search. You can change the frequency of your job alerts from daily to weekly by going to subscriptions.indeed.com or clicking email preferences from the top right drop down menu on the Indeed homepage. Here, you can also set up pause or delete any job alerts you have set up. Once you've found a few opportunities you're interested in pursuing, the next step is to update your resume. Some things to focus on are your experience. Uh, share how your work experience prepares you for the job you want by listing your transferable skills. For example, if you worked as a restaurant server or retail associate and you're interested in remote customer service roles, uh, highlight how aspects of your previous position apply to this new opportunity, like building rapport with customers and using empathy to solve problems. Uh, you also want to pay attention to keywords. Be sure to use keywords from the job posting within your resume. This will show you have strong attention to detail, and it can be beneficial when employers use screening software. For example, if the job posting says they're looking for someone who has expertise in a specific software tool, and you do, then be sure to list that software among your proficiencies. And you also want to pay attention to skills. Be sure to include both soft skills, which are personal habits and traits, as well as hard skills, which are technical knowledge and training you gain through experience and education. For example, your soft skills might consist of problem solving and dependability, while your hard skills might include things like bilingual in English and Spanish or proficient in CSS. Another option is gig work. Uh, the gig economy is made up of independent workers who are paid by the task or project and typically take on multiple temporary jobs at one time. This is useful for anyone seeking to supplement or substitute full-time or part-time income, and most gig positions need people who can be begin working immediately. There are a few ways you can find gig work amid the pandemic. First, uh, reach out to people within your personal and professional networks. Uh, ask for a virtual coffee date, and if they have any leads or on freelance opportunities, you can complete virtually. Also, sign up for online marketplaces or on-demand apps where you can pick up jobs as they come in. For example, uh, grocery shopping apps and food delivery services such as DoorDash and Grubhub are experiencing surges in usage from those who are practicing social distancing or immunocompromised and unable to leave home during the pandemic. Additionally, make sure to update your resume and online profile to show your ability to juggle multiple projects simultaneously. This is an important quality in a gig worker. Uh, also use this opportunity to share any freelance projects you've completed. Uh, consider what skills you have that would prepare you for certain gigs. For example, if you're highly organized and pay attention to detail, you might be a great grocery shopping and delivery worker. Also, consider how skills from gig jobs could be parlayed into different roles in the future. For example, communication skills developed as a rideshare app driver could benefit you as a remote call center representative. Because most gig work is highly flexible, it can be easy to lose your routine, which can negatively impact motivation. Instead, you should keep a fixed schedule. Wake up at the same time every day, take regular breaks, and schedule multiple virtual coffee dates throughout the week with your contacts in case any other opportunities become available. Unfortunately, bad actors are taking advantage of the pandemic and the sudden uptick in job seekers looking for remote opportunities. It's essential you take every possible precaution to protect yourself against potential scams. There are a few things you should always do when communicating with employers online. First, be wary of those who want to conduct all communication only through a chat platform. This is a popular tactic used by scammers around the globe. Most employers will want to conduct interviews using Google Hangouts, Zoom, Skype, or another video tool. Also, always confirm employee contact information. Look for spoof domains and non-corporate email addresses. For example, indeed at gmail.com rather than the name of the person at indeed.com. Uh, double check all this info by visiting the company website. Uh, also, employers will often request phone numbers and email addresses from applicants, but be wary of any company that asks you to send your social security number or banking information. 
uh, even if you know the company is legitimate and they're asking for this information as part of a background check or to set up payment, never send this information via email or chat. Now, if you believe you've been the victim of a scam, flag the fraudulent activity using report a job, report a message, help center, or support form. While the coronavirus is slowing down business for some employers, others are looking to grow their workforce. But to help curb the spread of the virus and abide by CDC guidelines, many of these employers are shifting their hiring process. In many cases, this means conducting interviews virtually. If you've never completed a virtual interview before, then we have a few pointers. To ace your virtual interview and ensure you shine just as brightly as you would in person, you need to consider three important elements. One, the setting, such as the environment. Two, your appearance and the appearance of the space. And three, demeanor, including etiquette and behavior. When selecting a place to conduct your virtual interview, choose wisely. Ideally, you wanna pick a space that's well lit, quiet, has reliable internet connection, and is free from distractions. Before your interview, be sure to complete a technology test run to ensure your computer, camera, and microphone are all functioning correctly. Remember to switch your mobile phone to silent. If you're taking the interview call from home, be sure to secure pets in another room and ensure family members or roommates will not interrupt. When selecting attire for your virtual interview, follow the same rules as you would for an in-person interview. Take time to research the company culture so you know what's appropriate, but always err on the side of overdressed than underdressed. Avoid bright colors and vibrant patterns and instead choose soft colors. If you're gonna wear a tie, be sure it's solid rather than pattern. Uh, adjust the lighting in the room so your face is well lit and ensure the background is professional and clear of any clutter or messiness. If possible, opt for a space with a blank wall. Um, while it may be tempting to wear sweatpants, always wear a professional outfit, including pants or a skirt, just in case you have to stand up for any reason. Just as when you're meeting with someone in person, it's essential you use proper etiquette and body language. Maintain eye contact and give the interview, interviewer your full and undivided attention. Maintain good posture and don't fidget or move on around unnecessarily. Nod while listening and use hand gestures when appropriate. Otherwise, rest your hands on your lap. Uh, keep a notebook and pen handy so you can take notes if pertinent. Sometimes technology goes awry and employers will likely understand. Uh, if your audio stops functioning or you lose your internet connection, immediately contact the employer by phone or email to let them know and ask if you can complete the interview by phone or reschedule. And if a loud uh, noise interrupts you or a family member or a pet enters the room, then you can apologize, mute the microphone, quickly remedy the situation, and continue when the coast is clear. So just to recap, here's uh, a useful virtual interview checklist. First, choose a quiet location for the call. Remove any clutter from the background. Ask others not to disturb you during the call and silence computer and phone notifications. Do a dry run to test your camera, audio, and internet connectivity. Select professional attire and sit up straight and maintain eye contact throughout the interview. With the uncertainty surrounding coronavirus, keep in mind some employers may take longer to review and respond to applicants than usual. In the meantime, continue applying to job openings, regularly reevaluate your skills to identify other potential strengths, and tailor your resume and cover letter. Consult your personal and professional network to ask if they can refer you to any remote job openings. To prevent employees from getting sick and spreading the virus further, many empl employers have uh, requested that their employees temporarily work from home. 36% of our survey respondents said they can or may be able to work from home during this time. While it has many benefits, working from home can be a difficult adjustment. If you're not accustomed to working from home, you may find this new life lifestyle challenging. But there are several things you can do to mitigate distractions, stay motivated, and be just as productive as you are in the office, if not more so. First, one of the best ways you can set yourself up for, for success while working from home is by setting up a designated workspace. Even if you don't have a home office, you can create a workspace by setting up a temporary desk in a guest room or another low traffic area in your home. Even a kitchen nook can suffice so long as you can avoid distractions. Uh, make sure the space is well lit and uncluttered in case you have to get on a video call. When you work from home, the line between work uh, and life can begin to blur. That's why it's crucial you adhere to a routine. Set specific hours for working and dedicate your time and attention to your work duties. Avoid household chores and prolonged personal conversations just as you would in the workplace. But once your workday is complete, do your best to avoid checking work email or responding to work-related calls and messages. The stricter you are with your schedule, 
the better you'll adapt to a new work habit. When you're working from home, it's tempting to stay in uh, pajamas all day. But remember, your, your routine and habits can affect your mindset. By showering, brushing your teeth, and dressing for the day, you'll feel more professional and uh, prepared for the day ahead. It's okay to dress comfortably, but try to avoid wearing sleeping clothes. Because you're home all day, your family and friends may assume you're always available. That's why it's crucial you set the expectation right away. Let people know your work hours and availability for socializing. For example, if you're at home with your partner, let them know you'll be able to uh, talk with them during your lunch break. If you're working from home with small children, setting these boundaries can be much more challenging. Uh, consider setting up a schedule with your partner or another family member where you'll take turns caring for the children. Uh, work with your employer to find the best solution. For example, you may need to split your workday into two four-hour shifts, one very early in the morning and one later in the evening with childcare duties in between. It's easy to become consumed with your work when you don't have the same natural breaks in your day, like your commute, lunch outings with coworkers, or social chats before meetings. However, it's still critical you make time to step away from your work. You'll be amazed at how much better you'll feel after eating a snack, going outside for some fresh air, or rolling out your yoga mat for some midday stretching. After taking a break, you'll feel rejuvenated and much more focused on the day's remaining tasks. So many changes at once, plus the uncertainty of our current circumstances, can be difficult to manage. But people and businesses are already finding many new and unique ways to adapt. Remember, we're all in this together. We know you have a lot of questions, so I'll go through some of the frequently asked ones. Then I'll open it up to Jed and Abby to answer some of the questions that came through in ND community. Okay, so uh, first question here is, are there any remote jobs I can do even if I have little to no uh, work experience? The answer is yes. Often you get a position working in data entry or audio transcription, even if you don't have experience. Additionally, you may not need experience to complete tasks for many gig economy apps. Um, but keep in mind, some of those companies will have their own requirements, such as knowing how to drive, even if uh, you're delivering items by car. Okay, next question, what should I do if I haven't heard back from a prospective employer? And you should, you should try to be as patient as possible. While it can be frustrating or disheartening when you don't hear back about a job you've applied to, remember many employers are also navigating around the pandemic. Uh, in the meantime, continue optimizing your resume, applying to jobs and accepting interviews for other opportunities. Do your best to stay positive. Okay, also, um, how can I concentrate when I'm working at home uh, with my family? And now it isn't very easy to focus on work when you're surrounded by loved ones who are also at home all day, especially if you have young children. Uh, do your best to set those boundaries and create work hours during which your loved ones know you can't be interrupted. Uh, consider discussing the situation with your employer and uh, work together to find a schedule or arrangement that meets both of your needs. And now I'll turn it over to uh, Abby for the, uh, uh, the next steps here. Great, thank you. Let's go to some of the questions that we got from Indeed community. So first question, um, Jed, this one I'll uh, ask you to answer. For those supposed to be graduating this May, how should we be preparing to enter the workforce now? What should we expect? Thanks, Abby. Uh, so this is a question that we're getting often. Uh, given that we're getting near graduation season. Um, uh, the, the truth is that, you know, it's going to be a hard labor market to graduate into. Um, we're not going to uh, be in a world where um, we had low unemployment rates um, as we've had the past many years. Um, so for uh, new graduates, uh, it will be a much harder market um, than most of us expected. Um, college is still a good investment. Um, over the long term, there's no question um, that uh, people with college degrees uh, earn more, have lower unemployment rates, um, even though um, the market you graduate into um, does have an effect uh, on your career path um, even after uh, that initial period ends. Um, a couple other things to keep in mind, though. Um, people who are graduating into the job market right now um, are of course going to be competing with lots of other people um, for uh, jobs that they're looking at. Um, but the mix of job seekers um, is likely to be a little bit different. Um, of course, people who don't have a good secure job right now um, may be uh, especially eager or even desperate um, to find work. Um, but people who are in a good secure job uh, probably aren't searching 
as much as they used to, uh, because uh, uh, tough economic times um, aren't the moment when people want to give up something secure um, for something new. Uh, so um, the uh, people who might be looking at the same jobs that you are um, might be a little different um, than a year or two ago. Um, and I think the other point is that um, the um, biggest shifts in the job market right now um, are among jobs that um, tend to hire fewer college graduates. Um, so the economy is shutting down right now. Um, uh, tourism, uh, food service um, uh, tend not generally um, to be uh, uh, jobs that um, tend to hire more college graduates. Um, also, the jobs that are ramping up, at least temporarily, to support the stay-at-home economy, uh, like delivery um, and uh, certain retailers, um, also um, tend to hire people um, who don't have college degrees. So the um, market for people with college degrees um, might be a little more stable um, than the rest of the labor market, um, but it is going to be a challenging market to graduate into. Great. Thanks, Jed. Um, I'll take this next one. We've had a couple of questions along these lines. Uh, the question is, I had an interview, but then I heard the company was freezing the search. How do I respond? So in a lot of these cases, the employer will contact you. If you're in the midst of the hiring process, they will reach out and let you know that either the position has been eliminated or that they've decided to freeze the search. If you haven't heard anything, just reach back out to your primary contact. I recommend you send them an email where you first thank them for their time and then let them know that you've heard that the search might be paused and ask if they will be continuing the hiring process for that specific position that you applied for and what the timeline might be there. Next question here, Jed, uh, I'll, I'll turn this one to you. I'm very concerned that there will not be jobs in my industry after the lockdown due to business closures. Should I be looking to change fields? So that's a great question, um, and we are still very early, um, both uh, in this health crisis and this economic crisis. Um, so it's, I think we're at a point where it's very hard to make longer-term guesses uh, about the types of jobs uh, that um, might be harder to find or easier to find uh, longer into the future. Um, and when thinking about making career changes, uh, it's important to have that longer-term perspective in mind. Um, the types of jobs that we're seeing uh, big increases in demand for right now, um, delivery and retail, um, these are likely to be temporary uh, spikes, and the sectors that are um, hiring very few people, um, that's also likely to be temporary. Now, we don't yet know whether temporary means uh, a few months um, or possibly longer. Um, but uh, we're likely at some point um, to get back to some of the longer term patterns uh, of job growth. Um, and those longer term patterns uh, are strong growth in healthcare, um, in professional uh, services and tech, um, as well as lots of other personal services, um, with slower growth um, in uh, fields like manufacturing, uh, agricultural related jobs. Um, and some kinds of office and clerical work. Those are the much longer term trends, um, which I expect um, we will get back to. Um, I don't think uh, this pandemic uh, is going to change uh, the long term expectation about where job growth uh, will be coming from uh, in the years to come. So I think it's too soon to think about making a career change, um, even if you need to be making uh, big changes um, over the next few months. Great. I will quickly answer one last question before we wrap up here. The question is, if I'm suddenly out of work due to the pandemic, should I be collecting unemployment? And the short answer here is this is definitely something that you should look into. If you are in the U.S., my recommendation is go online and search for the name of the state you're in and unemployment insurance. Uh, so Texas unemployment insurance, as an example, the first link there should be for the Department of Labor in your state. They will give you guidelines on how to apply and around eligibility. 
And if you're someone who maybe hasn't been eligible in the, in the past, I would still absolutely encourage you to look into this because uh, the Stimulus Act that was passed in the United States last week does expand eligibility criteria for unemployment insurance. So it may be the case that you are eligible now, even if you weren't prior. So please do check that out. And you can also find more resources on this topic, on really all of the topics that we've talked about today on Indeed. And you can find those at our um, indeed.com forward slash here to help page, range of information on the job search during COVID-19. Uh, many of you have already checked out indeed.com forward slash community and found your way here through that. I would really recommend that too as a safe space to discuss your job search with your peers, as well as uh, career coaches like Clint. So with that, that is all for today. Thank you for joining. For the latest information from Indeed, follow us on social media, and we'll continue to share relevant updates there. Thank you for tuning in and have a good day.